Clay Township Board of Trustees meeting to order. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thanks for coming, everybody. A windy day, that's for sure. Hope no one got blown away too much. Uh, roll call, please. Mark Bouchard? Here. Maureen Borey? Here. Joanne Shirky? Here. Artie Bryson? Here. Christy Hilton? Here. Chris Regan? I'm here. Cindy Valentine? Here. Okay, we're all here and accounted for. First thing we <coughs> have is a couple public hearings. I'll entertain a motion. We could probably do both of them at once. Make a motion to open the public hearing for the North Channel West Bridge repair and for the North Channel West paving at six o'clock. Support. Okay, motion support. All in favor of opening and having going to a public hearing signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries. So I'll go into a public hearing. This, um, we have two special assessments in the same area. They're on uh, North Channel West. Um, one is for bridge repair on the private road, and the uh, second one is for paving on the road. Uh, they're two separate projects, two separate special assessments, uh, same road. Is there anybody I'd like to speak to the, as to the special assessment, the public hearing on it? Entertain a motion to close the public hearing. I'll make a motion to close the public hearing for the North Channel West Bridge repair and the North Channel West paving at 601. Or. Okay, a motion to support any discussion. Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay, motion carries and we are now closed. All right, we have uh, bills payable. I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to support bills payable in the amount of $93,221.43. Support. Okay, a motion to support. Any questions, discussion, anything on that? Hearing none, roll call, please. Maureen Borey? Yes. Joanne Shirky? Yes. Artie Bryson? Yes. Christy Hilton? Yes. Chris O'Regan? Yes. Cindy Valentine? Yes. Mark Bouchard? Yes. Okay, motion carries. Next is a uh, supervisor's report. Okay, um, I started working on and uh, looking at our um, water and sewer ordinances, bringing them up to date. We gotta do a little bit of tweaking on both of those. <clears throat> um, dealing with uh, building and blight issues as always, we've had some uh, court issues going on and, and uh, with dangerous building and blight. In fact, we had a, a hearing today. I think it went well. Uh, I didn't get a report yet, but they said it, w it went well in front of uh, Judge Lane today on uh, one issue. So um, working on finalizing the audit, we had a meeting last Thursday, and they should be at our next meeting in December, December 20th, to go over our, um, our audit for our, our board so um we do have a pdf on that don't we mm -hmm. we'll email out I'll, I'll email it out to the everybody so you can look at it ahead of time okay. if you have any questions for our auditors while they're here i'm working on the pension liability bonding uh had a few meetings on that and uh reporting to standards and poor and department of treasury it's all going well um We'll update you. That will probably take place in the middle of January. Um, we got to submit everything to the Department of Treasury, and they, they got, we got to wait for their blessing on it, and then it will come back to us. Okay. Road's been doing a lot of <clears throat> talking with the Road Commission, and uh, I received some hard commitments from them in 2022, it's hard to get used to saying that, <laughs> just say next year, they're going to do a full repaving, in other words, they're going to 
grind it down and uh, redo the base and repave. They're going to do a full um, repaving of golf course road plus part of North Channel Road. They're going to do a new uh, uh, surface or chip seal on Bates Road and also on Middle Channel Drive. They are going to be repaving Anchor Bay Drive uh, 100%. And uh, it's going to depend on their work schedule and everything else. They, uh, they're going to try to replace the last bridge where you turn right before you get to uh, Decker's. These are all primary county roads. They are 100% responsible for them. But uh, we, I got firm commitments from them. So we're going to get a lot of uh, road work down here from them. And we were committed to uh, do the second half of Phillips Road still that we uh, already approved. Uh, county Parks, the DNR, we uh, actually, through the county, but we received a DNR trust fund grant for $150,000. Uh, to buy the property that's adjacent to the, where the county park's going to be, that yellow house, mm -hmm. right next week. We received, uh, or I should say, the county actually received the grant, and we helped them out with it uh, for $150,000. We don't have a specific um, uh, d deal with them. We're trying to cut a deal for them. And, but we, we, we do have the grant in place, so um, I'll, I'll be uh, facilitating some uh, talks between the property owner and the county um, about uh, purchasing that uh, piece of property. Um, and that will square up the, the whole property for the, uh, the beach park that we're going to go in. Go in. And... Um, <clears throat> I'd like to actually, it, it was pretty well funded this year and, and I assume next year too. I'm going to try to submit, um, uh, or I'm going to submit, uh, um, it's called a development grant for the Harsons Island Nature Park where the kayak launch is going in and the nature trail. So I gotta get working on that. Um, we gotta get our, um, our, um, Township uh, Parks and Rec plan updated though first. Uh, let's see, Township, uh, we, we got, uh, we replaced our hot water heater, or it's, I guess it's just a water heater. Um, and I've uh, been talking with Dave Vandenbosch, who's actually in the back row a lot. Uh, he, he's going to give us an update on uh, using some. Uh, County ARPA funds to help us out with emergency sirens. He's going to come and talk about that later on, so I won't go into that too much. Uh, we uh, have a verbal agreement with, uh, oh, with the three communities that share our wastewater treatment plant. Uh, there's, Co uh, not Cotterville, uh, Ira and um, Elginac. And um, as far as uh, controlling infiltration going forward. And uh, we're going to come up with a, a formal agreement where um, it's gotta get better for us. All, all three of our communities have to get better, but we're gonna have an agreement with uh, benchmarks and goals set for the five years to improve on it. And um, some type of a, a penalty for non-compliance and reaching the benchmarks. Uh, we all sat down, had a very good meeting, and uh, verbally agreed on, on it. And uh, so we're going to go forward with that plan. I also put in front of you is the, um, the wastewater treatment plant budget and also a five-year um, capital improvement plan. And in that, you'll notice, uh, you know, we're keeping our, our um, what each can, each uh, community contributes. Uh, it's going to stay the same for all five years, and it uh, it keeps our, um, uh, our our money that we need to have on hand uh, relatively in a comfortable spot, and our 
capital improvements. We, we did switch it up a little bit. Uh, we need to get a new generator uh, that will run all the plants when we do have a power outage, or all the pumps when we do have the, a power outage, and that's about $300,000. So. Um, <clears throat> And I'm doing a lot of research and looking for funding opportunities for our water main replacement um, project and also the sewer interceptor repair project. So I've been doing a lot with that. Um, just wanted to mention too, you know, uh, it was about three weeks now we had a big fire in the community where uh, uh, Rolling Brook was burnt down. It was it's actually an Elgnac proper. But um, we had 24 units that burned down. We had a lot of people displaced. And it's really incredible how our community came forward to help these people out. And uh, I just want to give kudos to our community again, our service groups. I know uh, Elginac Lions, Pearl Beach Lions, Elginac Rotary, they stepped up and, and, and gave a lot of money to help these people out. And, and just to update, um, the Elgnac Lions was playing a lead, lead role on getting a, a new housing. And, and I, I really don't know much about uh, it's called Section 8 housing funding. Mm -hmm. But it takes about three months for it to kick in. So really, these people, they, they need housing now. And uh, they came up, she and everybody came up with about $45,000 to uh, provide new housing for these people for three months. That's huge. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't, it wouldn't happen in any other community, I don't think, than other in ours. We, I've said it many times, I'll continue to say it, we have an awesome community, so. All right, that's, that's with all I have for my report. Any questions, board? Okay, um, next we have public comments. Do we have any public comments? Come on up, state your name and address. Good evening. Christine Holcomb, Harsons Island, also Vice Chair of the Planning Commission. So back in December of 2020, almost a couple of weeks shy of right where, right where we are right now, the Planning Commission was in a position we now find ourselves in again. We have two members that have commissions expiring and who have requested reappointment. Back in December, one commissioner was not reappointed by the supervisor, Mr. Harold Bain, and the other, our chairperson, Kathy Schweikart, was told by the supervisor at the meeting in January of this year that he would reach out to her by phone. I can tell you she's still waiting for that phone call. Fast forward to today. Planning commissioners Tom Kozell and Whitey Simon, the Secretary of the Planning Commission, were both up for reappointment. Both submitted their letters of interest in serving and being reappointed to another term. I see your agenda for tonight's meeting includes the reappointment of Mr. Kozell, but no mention of Commissioner Simon or that of the chairperson, Ms. Schweikart. Both Mr. Simon and Ms. Schweikart have served on the Planning Commission for over 15 years. Mr. Simon's been the secretary on the Planning Commission. They both bring knowledge, experience, education, professionalism, impartiality, integrity, and common sense to the commission. In his email to Mr. Simon, the supervisor stated, he was polling some of the board to see what direction they'd like to go in. My knowledge of the direction of the Planning Commission is that it is established by law, by the master plan, and to the health and welfare of the community. It was pointed out to me in January that the supervisor makes the recommendation to the board for appointment to the Planning Commission. And I totally understand that. However, it's the board who makes the decision as to who gets appointed, not the supervisor. With that, I ask you to please amend your agenda to include the reappointment of Mr. Simon and Ms. Schweikart to your agenda. But it doesn't stop there. Also on your agenda tonight, is a confirming the Clay Township Planning Commission, Planning Commission Confirm Ordinance, which is attached to the agenda and entitled Ordinance to Confirm the Establishment of a Planning Commission with Zoning Authority. 
I can tell you that since November of 1965, the Planning Commission has consisted of nine members, one of which is from the Board of Trustees and has never included the Township Supervisor. I'm curious as to when this discussion regarding this ordinance occurred and if any of the public was allowed to hear the discussion or participate. And I'm curious as to your individual thoughts on the ordinance. Were you all provided with a draft to discuss at, a, at the meeting this ordinance was suggested at? Or did this ordinance just come at you completely prepared and ready for signature with no input necessary? Do you ever question the reason, intent, or direction the effects these changes will bring to this township? Lastly, I'd like to call attention that if you adopt this ordinance, it will not only reduce the number of planning commissioners from nine to seven, it will also reduce the number of planning commissioners from the island by half. I ask you, do you feel that this is what the citizens from the island that elected you to represent them on this township would want you to do? Does that re reflect a fair and equitable representation of the entire geography of this township on the Planning Commission? I think not. Please don't adopt this ordinance. As a citizen of this township, I respectfully ask you to all, please think about this. Watch the Planning Commission meetings, attend a Planning Commission meeting, ask questions, listen to the voice of the community, and ask yourself questions before you make a decision. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Any other public comments? My name is Sharon Newman. My address is 4460 Middle Channel Drive. And I have to say the young lady over um, said pretty much everything better than I could ever say it. But many people, including myself, are questioning the reappointment of Whitey Simon. And as I understand that Kathy Schwarkhart, who is the chair of the Planning Commission, has served over a year without reappointment. And this seems questionable to me and many. So you are reappointing Tom Cazell. The community supports Whitey and Kathy due to all their vast experience, extensive knowledge and service and long-term service of what they have done. And I see on the agenda that you are interested in reducing the planning commission from nine to seven members. Is this plan to eliminate Kathy and Whitey? Will they be the two to go? Thank you. Thank you. I will, I will tell everyone there's not going to be, we haven't met and discussed this ordinance. That's illegal. We're going to discuss it tonight amongst ourselves. We, we didn't, there's like the person before alluded, when did you have your meeting and, and when was it discussed? It's never been discussed. We're going to talk about it tonight, our board. And, um, and that's why I, I was going to pull to see what the direction of the board and talk about which direction the board wants to go and uh, leave it at that. And, and there won't be, we're not voting on, on amending the ordinance tonight. It's for a discussion. So, any other public comments? I wanted to read into the record this. this well, this, what, I, I contacted. Public comments, this is public well, comments. This, I was told by <clears throat> this is law it? firm that due to COVID um, concerns, the people that were behind sending this letter to us weren't here and they want it read into the public comments for the record. So I'm just well, going to read the, I'm going to read this so it can be in public comments as on the record. That's what they asked me to do. Public comments. This is public comments. I'm reading it on behalf of the concerned citizens. They sent everyone on the board a letter from an attorney uh, questioning these potential changes. Since we're all talking about it, I, I want it read into the record on behalf of the people who wrote this. And it says, Dear Board of Trustee Members, I have been asked by some concerned citizens to address the potential issue of a pending change to the makeup of the Clay Township Planning Commission. I have attached as Exhibit 1 the copy of the document that was provided to me that is entitled Clay Township Ordinance to Confirm the Establishment of a Planning Commission with Zoning Authority. It is my understanding at this time the current Clay Township Zoning Ordinance known as Zoning Ordinance Number 126 
was adopted on August 20, 2007 with an effective date of September 5, 2007. That document on page two in section 1.08 repealed any previously existing zoning ordinance in Clay Township. Exhibit one indicates that it is being adopted pursuant to the Michigan Zone Enabling Act to wit MCL 125.3101. Exhibit one in section three at the top page of two provides as follows. One member of the township board or the township supervisor or both shall be appointed to the planning commission as ex officio members. It further provides as follows, an ex officio member has full voting rights. It is my understanding that part of the current proposal is to reduce the planning commission from nine to members to seven. It is my understanding that there is no lack of interest in Clay Township from the citizens to not serve on the planning commission. The statute MCL 125.3815 section three provides, the membership of a planning commission shall be representative of important segments of the community, such as the economic, governmental, educational, and social development of the local unit of government, such as agricultural, natural resources, uh, recreation, education, public health, government, transportation, industry, and commerce. The membership shall also be representative of the entire territory of the local unit of government to the extent practicable. The statute MCL 125.3815 provides as follows. In a township that on September 1, 2008 had a planning commission created under former 1931 PA 285, one member of the legislative body or the chief elected official or both may be appointed to the planning commission as ex officio members. In any other township, one member of the legislative body shall be appointed to the plan planning commission as ex officio member. It would appear at this juncture that the current planning commission for Clay Township was not created under the former 1931 PA 285. The current Clay Township zoning ordinance in section 102 states that zoning ordinance is adopted in accordance with the provisions of the Michigan Zoning Enabling Act, ZEA, Public Act of, two, of 110 of 2006. MCL 125.3101 as amended and repeals Clay Township Zoning Ordinance 123, effective September 3rd, 2002, and all amendments thereto effective coincident with the effective date of this ordinance. I have attached as Exhibit 2 the Michigan Attorney General's Opinion, number 6834, dated February 3rd, 1995, issued by then Michigan Attorney General Frank J. Kelly. His opinion notes in part as follows. At the common law, public officers with power of appointment were disqualified from appointing themselves as to a public office. Page two of that opinion states as follows. In light of the common law rule against self-appointment to public office and the provisions of Michigan's incompatibility statute that prohibit a person from holding two public offices when one public office has the power of appointment or removal over the other public office, it must be concluded that the legislature did not intend in section four of 1959 PA 168 to authorize the township supervisor to appoint himself or herself to the township planning commission. It is my opinion therefore that a township supervisor may not appoint himself or herself as a member of the township planning commission that's from Frank J. Kelly. Uh, the Clay Township Zoning Ordinance Article X, what is that? XXVI provides for the makeup of the Township Planning Commission. Commission. In section 26.02, it states the Planning Commission shall consist of nine members who shall be representative of major interests as they exist in the township, such as agriculture, recreation, education public health, government, commerce, transportation, and industries. All members shall be qualified electors and property owners of the township. One member of the township board <coughs> shall be a member of the planning commission. All members of the planning commission shall be appointed by the township supervisor with the approval of the township board. Members may be removed by the township supervisor after a hearing with the approval of the township board. The term of each member shall be for three years, except that of the members first appointed. One third shall serve for one year, one third for two, and one third for three. All vacancies for unexpired terms shall be filled 
For the remainder of such term, a member shall hold office until his or her successor is appointed. Thus, I would respectfully suggest that the Township Board is not in a position at its December 6th meeting to change the makeup of the Planning Commission or to authorize a revision that was supposedly authorized the Township Supervisor to appoint himself to the Planning Commission. And this was re respectfully submitted to for concerned citizens by Gary Gendernalik of the Shaper Law Firm. Hey, thank you. I think I kind of said that. They asked me to read it, so. Okay. I think I already just kind of said that. Nothing was right. going to be decided today. So. Right, right. Jim Newman, 7650 South Channel Drive. Um, you know, we got a lot of concerned people here in the room once again, and it kind of, there's a common theme here each time we seem to get a good audience, and that we have concerns with the residents of Clay Township. Um, this one being particularly strong because we're looking at making a dramatic change in the makeup of a very important group within Clay Township. Um, I'm going to st just throw this out there because a lot of people are thinking it, and um, I'm not afraid to say it. But there's no secret that some of the people that Artie's choosing not to, um, I guess, reinstate once again, have a differing, differing opinion or agenda than the Bryson family ferry. Okay? It, and Artie, you can, you can scoff all you want. But you're not operating in a secret anymore. Everybody knows that you're a member of that family. And a member of a family will always be right, right. They'll always stand by their family. And you continually say you're going to remain neutral. But it's, this is so clear. It's so obvious that that's not what you're doing. Because there are people that you're saying, I'm not going to reinstate them again because they have a differing opinion. That's not why. The, right. You expect us to believe that? Do you think we're all fools in this room? Thank you for your comments. I, I've got a little bit okay. more in here. And you guys on the board, it's really important that you guys listen to the people, OK? Your job is to make sure that we have those checks and balances and that we don't have somebody or a group of people with an incredible amount of say in how things go. We've got to have balance. And we're looking to you guys to make sure that that balance stays in place, OK? We need you guys more than ever right now to do what's right for the community. I don't think there's anybody in this room or in this community that thinks reducing the number on the commission to seven is a good idea. We don't want that. We want checks and balances. And we expect you guys to uphold that. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Jim. Any other comments? I have a you, got, you have to come up and state your name. And this, this is public comments. I just have a question. Um, are the meetings all about <laughs> the Dan Newman Middle Channel. Um, are the meetings normally at 7 o'clock? 6 o'clock. OK. Okay, I thought that, were, uh, that was my question. Yep. Okay, so that answers it. Thank you. Yep. They, we moved them from seven to six. Right. July. July. Uh, excuse me, sir. Are you speaking of the planning commission or the board meeting? Okay. Yeah, the planning okay. commission is still at seven o'clock when we do have a meeting. Any other public comments? No more public comments? All right, move along. <clears throat> Next, we have the consent agenda. I'll, I'll, make, I'll, make a motion, I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda consisting of the minutes from November 15th, the minutes from the special board meeting of November 30th, and the check reports for paid from the meeting 1115, payroll, and in between meetings. Support. Okay, a motion to support. Any discussion or questions on any of it? It's just a little one, but we, we paid somebody um, to paint some lights over on the island. Paid somebody to paint some 17 lights. South Channel lights painting or something. Was that a, an improvement? Betterments and improvements? Or? Yeah, 
if you had checked with me before the meeting, I could have looked it up for you, but off the top of my head, I can't tell you. Okay. Sorry. Uh, it's for 425 bucks. It's not the end of the world. I just wanted to know what it's for. So I'll check with you after the meeting. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Is that the, maybe that's for Save Our South Channel Lights for the... No. I don't want to speculate what it's for because I, yeah, I okay. don't know. Okay. Is that paid in between meetings? Mm-hmm. Looks like that's the page you're on, right? In between? It is. Yep. Yep. Anyone in the audience know anything about that? Yeah. <laughs> no. We'll check into it. I, I, I'm not sure what it's for. Yeah, I didn't mean to put you on the spot. It's just you guys are normally... You're all over that. I was questioning a, a report, a check that was issued for a, a, a South Channel uh, painting project for about 400 bucks, and I just didn't know what that what was, was for, too? and I should have checked uh, before the meeting to find out, and and I didn't. So normally, um, you know. Oh, our, I will tell you. That is for um, Parks and Rec, so it's money in, money out. Oh. It was for a painting class. Oh, cool. That Parks and Rec hosted. Money oh, in, money out. Of the South Channel Lights. Yes. yes. <laughs> okay. Money in, money out for Parks and Rec. Thank you. You're welcome. It was for a painting class through Parks and Rec. Yeah. Okay. Uh, anything else on the consent agenda? Hearing none, all in favor of the consent agenda, signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion passes. Uh, fire chief report. Chief? <laughs> we wouldn't hear you coming. Christmas you is wouldn't coming. Hear me coming. <laughs> Good evening. Chief's report for November uh, 2021. During the month of November, I did not attend any meetings. Uh, I was out of town on the two occasions that uh, the Chiefs Association meeting was held and also the Island uh, Homeowners Association. Uh, new airboat's been uh, uh, taken out of storage and placed in Station 1. We're changing over equipment on it and we're doing conducting training on it. In fact, we took it over to Russell Island. We had to take the police department over there to check on some uh, suspicious uh, boaters over there so and it worked really well for us so Good. we're really proud with it fireboat one uh, had some issues uh, so we uh, pulled the power head on it uh, it's at the service department right now they're going to check and see what caused it to seize up uh, i then uh, stored the boat uh, at um, the elginac harbor club for the year uh, boat two was pulled out and winterized and that also is stored at, boat, at uh, main station in case we need to use it in the winter time to get uh, the police department or the fire department over to the outer islands. Um, and let's see. Uh, engine one will be taken over to um, West Shore. In fact, it's going to go over on uh, Wednesday morning for some uh, uh, warranty issues. They're going to fix it. It should be gone for about a week. We'll get that back put their equipment on it, then it'll be transferred over to uh, the island and it'll stay over there for good. So that'll be uh, all set. Uh, I wanna thank, or I want to uh, advise the residents to make sure that their they change their batteries and their smoke detectors and their CO2 detectors. Uh, winter is upon us. Also to uh, clean their wood stoves and uh, their chimneys and have them inspected. Um, I also would like to uh, read this. Um, we responded to a uh, large fire in the city of Algonac as a mutual aid. Clay Township is truly fortunate to have a team like this one. In a time of need, we all put, pull together and make it happen. I would like to thank the police department, the fire department, and dispatch for an awesome job, and the Algonac and Pearl Beach Lions for being a great resource. So in that time, we all pulled together, we helped the city, and... <laughs> Uh, did an awesome job. We've been busy, Chief, haven't we? Yes, we have. We're going to probably hit 15 or go above 1,500 calls for right. the year. We're at 15, 1559 right oh, now. Oh, we already went past yes, 15. We did. Or no, I'm sorry, 1459. And I, I can remember not long ago, we were, thought we were busy on 1,000 calls. Yep. Mm. So, any questions for Chief? 
time, Chief. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. I may add he assisted with uh, bringing over a uh, AED to the uh, Lions Club for the yep. only uh, uh, respondents that we had, right? And, uh, which was beneficial. Yeah. We brought an AED over for the Elmac Lions uh, during that event. Left it there because they, there's a lot of events in that hall, and uh, and it is a a warming center, emergency warming center for us. So, thank you. Okay. Yep. I didn't know what that was. Automatic distributor. Okay. Yep. All right. Under new business. Uh, <clears throat> We have fire department uh, accept a donation of three hundred dollars from St. John's Marsh Dental. Huh. I'd entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to accept the donation for three hundred dollars from St. John's Marsh Dental. Support. Okay, we have a motion to support, and I saw it. Wanted to give our fire department a little help, so. Any uh, discussion on that? Okay, all in favor of accepting a donation, signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Thank you to St. John's Marsh Dental. Uh, next we have uh, Parks and Rec uh, M Parks Conference to uh, send Cindy Babish there. Uh, it's going to be the cost is four hundred and fifty dollars plus lodging, and we're going to split that half with um, Ira. I'll make a motion to approve the M Parks conference for Cindy Babbitts with a four hundred and fifty dollars plus lodging split with Ira Township. Okay, I have motion and support. Any discussion? Is that just for one person? Yes. Yep. Any more discussion? And where is that being held at? Traverse City. Yeah, Traverse City. You get a lot of benefits out of it. I mean, we we probably recoup our money easily with uh, grants and stuff that she's able to get, you know, from the training and, and not good ideas. Okay. Okay, any more discussion? All in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay, motion carries. All right, next, uh, planning uh, commission reappointment of Tom Kozell. Uh, as you said, I'm nominating Tom for another term on the uh, planning commission. He, uh, he's uh, been, been a member, I think, three or four terms, three terms, I think. Uh, He's been a good asset. I think he's a voice of reason. Uh, he's 2014. Uh, he's what? 2014. Yeah. He's uh, a design engineer, so he's quite knowledgeable on, on, on different things. He actually grew up on Harsons Island, spent a lot, of, a lot of time on his life on Harsons Island, and now he lives in the back country, I'll just say, in, in Clay Township. So he's very knowledgeable, lived here his whole life, grew up here. He's, you know, he's a muskrat, so. That's my nomination. Entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve Tom Gazelle to another term on the Clay Township Planning Commission. Okay, there's a second. Support. Okay, we have motion support. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay, motion carries. Next we have for discussion, I just wanted to get your uh, input on, um, it, it was, how this all started was, um, you know, we have, we have a new planner, and uh, he suggested, and also we had uh, uh, our legal kind of suggest, why do we have a nine-member planning commission board. Most communities our size are five-member. Um, and, uh, you know, we've been having uh, problems of getting things done with the planning commission. Uh, we're 
definitely in arrears for our um, our rec our rec plan that's up in three weeks. Uh, and to my knowledge, they haven't even started on um, on looking at it. Uh, and that's a, a, a pretty big deal, especially for our community, because recreation is a large part of our community. Uh, and, and there was other things that it's just take, taken too long to get done. Such as what what problems things are getting done? I, I need to know. Um, oh, I can probably get more granular with you. Like like for instance, well, right now we're being we're being sued on an ordinance that I questioned right from the origin. You know, it's ambiguous. It wasn't well read, and, and it comes from our planning commission. And if it was written correctly or right, in my opinion, and you know, maybe I'm the only one on this board, we probably wouldn't be in the middle of a lawsuit right now. And that comes from the planning commission on the zoning for 126. Do you have any comments on that, Mark? You're on the commission? Well, it was brought before the board, and the board did approve it. Yep. Right. So I don't know why, why it was a... Uh... Not, so, not, not addressed at that point in time during the board approval process. Right, it should have been, but I mean, I, I actually called Giffel and Webster's, our old planner, and, and uh, oh, they, there won't be any problems with it. Well, okay, so it's partly my fault, too. Well, yeah, it but, doesn't sound like that was the but, planning uh, commission. It sounds like it was the board. But uh, recently they came to us with a, a, a zoning amendment for fences on the water. Remember, we, we turned it down. We denied it. Um, because the planning commission for for someone to put get a fence approved on the water, instead of having giving us concise, this is how you do it. Uh, this is the criteria which needs to be um, met to have this fence. They said no. We want you to come for a special land use in front of the planning commission, which would cost someone minimum six hundred fifty dollars this is for a permit for a fence and take two months and i thought that was ludicrous and i thought we all did that this should be able to be handled administratively like any other permit with the um with, with our building inspector you know they're supposed to set the crisis so we rejected it weren't people asking for that mark though is that why the planning commission did it this is well, it goes into a long story about somebody wanted the fence and actually uh, had something to do with obstructive view of the, of the waterfront. So I can't hear you. It, it had something to do with the uh, <coughs> waterfront and obstructive view of somebody putting the fence in. So uh, that came before the, uh, the planning commission about three different times, public hearing, so on and so forth, and we restricted the, uh, uh, that, that fencing and, and having a permit for it. So. Uh, that's that's the short story, uh, but going back to the planning and the planners that we did hire at that point in time, obviously we did remove those planners from yeah. uh, being given us as you said and uh, being given us uh, uh, ordinances. So, so <laughs> we're moving on from there. Now that we have a planner, that him and I are in discussion with some of the issues, and, and we don't have we have a lot of uh, uh, things that overlap one another, and we're straightening those out as well. So all, all these things are sitting in, and others are sitting in purgatory, I'll say. And, you know, our, our planner says, suggested go down to a seven-member board. And uh, we pulled this ordinance off, off the MTA. So there was two ordinances on there yes. to confirm the planning commission. One was whether your original, which is why this is sitting in front of you, whether your original... Planning Commission ordinance was under Public Act 285, or if it was under, I think the other one was 168. Yes. So I pulled our ordinance, and this is Public Act 285. This is the ordinance that goes with it. Now, the reference that Gary has referred to in that letter that was sent to the board the attorney. refers to 168, not the 285, and he refers to it into the zoning ordinances not our township ordinance so he's referring to the zoning ordinance 126 
not our township ordinance that creates the zoning or the planning commission. So we can look into that and see if there was an error in the zoning when they printed that or when they adopted it or and if that's the case then we'll just switch to the other ordinance. They are both exactly mm -hmm. the same but ordinance public act 285 does allow for the supervisor to sit. There are approximately three townships in Michigan that had adopted this in 1965 and we were one of them. Well, it seems to me that the people don't want to reduce it, and I want to do what the people want to do. Um, okay. Yeah. The master plan that was put can, out by can, the previous can, planners I thought was very professional. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know. I, I'm new, so, you know, I don't know everything. I called, when we got this uh, letter from the attorney today, I, I mean, it took me, you know, like, what is going on? So I called MTA and, uh, um, and then talked to them and I looked through our book and it says on page 353 here, an elected officer or employee of the township cannot serve as a member or employee of the planning commission except that one member of the township board, which is Mark, must be appointed by the planning commission as the ex officio member. So, I mean, I'm sure there's probably some loophole or some way to get around it with these different acts that you're talking about? Correct. Like I said, the majority of townships, <clears throat> I just pulled the ordinance that applied to us based off of how we originally adapted it. Right. And let, let me read further. This is uh, Michigan Planning Enabling Act uh, 33 of 2008, which is after, <clears throat> after the Attorney General's opinion. This is what our state legislature passed uh, planning commission membership appointment terms vacancies blah 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 um, and it is act uh, MCL 125.3815 paragraph 5 in a township that on September 1, 2008, had a planning commission created under the former PA 1939, PA 285, which we are, and it says it right here, we are. Uh, let's see, created under PA 235, a member of the legislative body or the chief elected official, which is the supervisor, or both may be appointed to the planning commission as ex official members. Well, it's like I said, I mean, right. if I'm sure there's a way that we can make it happen, but I don't think it's in the but, best interest yeah. if that's what the people don't want. If, I mean, if, so if, we, this, if we've been operating since nine people since 1965 and the people who are going to be eliminated that have been in there over 15 years, it just doesn't seem to be a good idea to me. You know, okay, you're going to well, appoint the people and you're going to run it? Yeah. No. Well, no, listen. I, I'm trying to I, understand it because I'm new. I'm not, I'm not saying I want to be on the planning commission. I really don't, don't want to. I, I, I'm trying to understand You know, it. I love it when people tell me what I think. I said I think. I'm new. I'm trying to understand I, 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 uh, it. I, 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 it just, if, the, if this board would like it to happen, it affords that right to this board. That's all. If the board doesn't want the supervisor on it, it it's, it's a non-issue. Again, so, I didn't pick the, con the confirming ordinance that we liked better. I mean, we took the language right out of the... Well, whichever one applied to our township is yeah, what I... We took I the applied. language out. Okay. And well, I don't know. I, I mean, I talked to MTA, and they, you know, they said they're... Well, this was from the MTA site that exactly. this was pulled off of. So, so all right. Well, so, uh, like I said, I'm new. I'm trying to understand it. I'm trying to do what the people want. And so, what I wanted to do is have a discussion because we all, I mean, would, would we would we agree that there's been issues with the planning commission and getting things out of it? Um, it was suggested to me that a seven-member board would probably work better than a nine-member board. And that's what, what we, we brought. Uh, if the board would like us to, want us to continue that 
aspect, what we would do is direct the Planning Commission to have a couple or a public comment or a public hearing on the topic and then advise us if the, the Planning Commission wishes to uh, adopt this ordinance or not. Then it would come back to this board and we would have the right to adopt it or change it or, 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 or not adopt it. The Planning Commission would have the public hearing? Yes. Well, yes. in my I think opinion, that would be a great and, opportunity. And, and what, what I would like to, to get is, does this board want us or want to direct the Planning Commission to have a public hearing on this topic? Yes. That's, that's all we're looking for tonight. I don't. In my opinion, you don't want to have a public. The more count, people that want to serve, okay. I, I don't. I, you don't want to give others the the to uh, the. Well, I don't think people want change. Well, there's some people that don't, but there might be a lot. I'm just asking if you want to have a public hearing on the topic. No, no, no. This is it. They don't want to have a public hearing. <laughs> well, <I've, laughs> Obviously. This is a public hearing. No, it's not a public hearing. This is a board discussion on the ordinance. Explain to me. Again, because I'm new, so explain to me, I mean, I think we're so fortunate to have people who have all this vast knowledge and experience who want to serve. Yes. And it, this is, eliminates them. Like, if we had people that didn't want to serve, I could see reducing it. But the more people you have, you know, if there's absences, there's, you have more of a quorum, the more opinions you get, the more checks and balances you get. So explain to me, like, What's the big benefit of having less when you have people who want to serve? I mean, I know you're saying we're going to get done things done quicker, but I haven't heard a lot of complaints about the planning commission. But I, that I may be, you know. Well, what what complaints have you heard? I've had complaints from <laughs> plan or, or from engineers, from developers, and from other citizens. I'm amazed the guy from Blue Horseshoe had, didn't sue us for taking two years to get that project approved through our planning well, 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 let me interrupt you on that. Yeah. That, 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 that issue with, with Blue, that issue with Blue right. Horizon okay. is, is, is yeah. their fault, not the planning commission's but fault. It, it's They're the ones that brought together, brought before us an incomplete site plan. Okay. How can you make a decision on that? Right. And not only once, but several times. But it, it's just been taken a long time to get things done. And all the complaints that you do get from the citizens, and let me correct you because I am on the Planning Commission, right. it's because we're upholding the ordinances that are in place. Okay. Mark, I need a parks and rec plan in three weeks. It ain't going to happen. Have, have you given direction to the uh, chairman on that? Yes, I get, and the whole commission, I told them. Well, what? Oh, I told you. I sent emails out. I'll check my emails. Um, telling you, know, we got, we need a parks and rec plan. The planning commission should know is up at end of 2021. How would we know that? Because you you approved it in two, 2017. It's five years. That's four, right? 17 to 21? 17, 18, 19, 20, 20. No, it's five. Oh, at the end of 17 to the or maybe you know, the beginning? I, I don't care. Yeah. You know, We're kind of getting in the weeds here. Kind of getting in the weeds here. So, my question to the board is, do, you, do we want to give direction to the Planning Commission to have a public hearing on reducing the size of the Planning Commission? Yes, no, I would like. I would like to hear public input from a public hearing. Mm -hmm. Yep, I would too. So do you want me to make a motion? Yeah, mm -hmm. I'll make a motion that we um, have the planning commission conduct a public hearing with regard to confirming the establishment of the planning commission, downsizing to seven members. No. I'll support that. No. You support that? Yep. Okay. So we have a motion to have a public hearing that's advertised so everyone has the, has the right to come and voice their opinion. 
on reducing the size of the planning commission from nine to seven. So, so with this motion uh, going to the planning commission, would it be definitive to uh, have them approve this ordinance that you're putting forth? This is a sample like they gave us for the marijuana ordinance or the short-term rental ordinance, remember? Right. It's just a sample. And believe me, if they want to take out having the supervisor on, no problem. Good. So if we no have the, problem. <clears throat> so if we have the public hearing and the public says they don't want it to go from 9 to 7, then are we going to uphold that? Is that what it, the public it, hearing well, is for? It would, it would still be a planning commission vote. To, then it would to, to come back to us. Right? Yeah. Then so, it would come back to us. So I'm just trying to understand what happens after the public hearing. We have the public hearing. People come speak out that they're for or against it. Then the planning commission votes to go from 9 to 7? Or? They, they vote. Uh, they could say we're not going to take any action. Uh, yes, we want to go from nine to seven. They, they can vote either way, and then once they give their decision, it comes back to this board, and then we can act. Okay. So, because the process is the planning commission does it, and and it says in the state law, the planning commission has a public hearing, which is the right way to do it. I'm sorry. What time of year will they have a... It's up to the planning commission. Do it in the summer when everybody's here. So. Yeah. Not March. All right. We have a, a motion. You want to repeat, repeat the motion again? Um, motion to direct the planning commission to hold a public hearing with regards to the Clay Township ordinance confirming the establishment of a planning commission with a reduction of members from nine to seven. You had support for that, didn't you? Yep, I, I supported support. it. Yes. Okay. I did too. Any more discussion with the board? Let's do a roll call vote, please. Joanne Shirky. Yes. Artie Bryson. Yes. Christy Hilton. Yes. Chris O'Regan. Yes. Cindy Valentine. Yes. Mark Bouchard. Yes. Maureen Borey. No. Okay, it passes. Six to one. All right, moving on. We have a resolution 2021-42, establishing water rates. Um, in the resolution, we have a small increase. This is the first time we've done an increase, what, three years, John? Three or four? Three years. Three years. Uh, it goes up uh, 11 cents per thousand gallons, and the uh, base charge goes up one dollar. Um, I'd just like to point out that this is um, conforming to our rate study that we had done three yes. years, four years ago. Um, so we're just trying to stay on track with their recommendations. We haven't raised the water rates in a long time either, right? Three years. They've been frozen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, um, and I think our informal and our audit, we were basically at break even with the water department this year. So I, I think we're in a plus by like seven thousand dollars. So, uh, and that's not including the um, depreciation. So make a motion. Yep. I'll make a motion to approve the resolution 2021-42, establishing water rates, with highlights including January 1st through 2022 through December 31st, 2022. The consumption charge will be $5 per 1,000 gallons per quarter, and the water supply charge will be $35 per quarter. Support. Okay, a motion to support. Any discussion? What percentage increase is this? It's 11 cents. 11 cents. 11 cents. For a thousand gallons. For a thousand gallons. Eleven cents for a thousand gallons. It's eleven cents on five dollars. Yeah, really, eleven right? cents on five five dollars. That would be two uh, percent. Yeah, a little over two. Okay. 
fifty. Oh, that would be. Is it a full two? Looks like two tenths. Point oh two. Forty six. Okay. Say two point twelve. Two point four. Okay. Any other Sorry. discussions? And this is what our auditors recommended about four or five years ago. We're just staying on the course. We are going to be doing a, a, lots of studying on this uh, going forward. Um, okay, any more discussion? No. Hearing none. Roll call. Artie Bryson? Yes. Christy Hilton? Yes. Chris O'Regan? Yes. Cindy Valentine? Yes. Mark Bouchard? Yes. Maureen Borey? Yes. Joanne Shirky? Yes. A okay, motion passes. Next we have our vehicle leases. Um, for the police, do we have water in here too? We do not. Next meeting. Okay. And we have uh, the township car, right? Yes. So, hey. well, not Mike? Well, this is uh, the program that we talked about here a couple months back. A few times, yeah. Um, as far as leasing opposed to buying. Um, as you can see right now, you know, we can come in under $60,000 a year, and that is leasing six new patrol vehicles. It's unlimited miles on these vehicles. Right now, for us to purchase two vehicles is almost $80,000. So this puts us into uh, a fleet across the board, as well as keeping the miles reduced better Let's face it, we travel a lot of miles. We got a lot of area that we cover in the township here. And the best thing about this is with this lease, Enterprise monitors our vehicles, monitors the mileage, the maintenance, everything like that. Then they will refer to us what is the best time to sell these vehicles to get the maximum dollar amount. Um, with that being said, obviously we all know right now the, the market's high as far as used vehicles. Um, there's, there's a few uh, municipalities near us here that have actually just sold vehicles that were 2015s with almost 100,000 miles on them and got more than what they paid for them in 2015. So the problem that we're having right now is what we do is we buy two new vehicles, those vehicles get pushed back to secondary and then, then a third set of vehicles, then we sell them at that point. But the problem is once we sell them, the tires are basically driven off of them and we're making no money on them. Everything that I'm seeing with this program, and I've been researching this now for probably going on about eight months now, talking to everybody that's done it, and I have not gotten any negative feedback on this. It's all been positives, and they've been an excellent company to work with. Um, I think in the long run, we are really going to save a lot of money, as well as keeping our people in a lot safer vehicles, too, instead of having vehicles out there running around at 120, 130,000 miles on them. Lower maintenance costs. Much lower maintenance. And probably better fuel, mi yes. fuel mileage. Our vehicles right now, we get through the, uh, what is the Macomb County bid. Um, so we do purchase these vehicles at a cheaper rate, which really help, uh, helps us on the resale value because usually when we buy these vehicles, we're probably getting them eh, close to $10,000 a car cheaper than what you can go buy them retail. So in, in with these, it doesn't matter if we keep them one year, we keep them five years we can sell them at any time we want to sell these vehicles. Any profits from those vehicles come back to us. They take care of all the um, auctioning of the vehicles, getting rid of these vehicles for us. So another thing that we don't have to worry about taking care of as well. So it works out really nice. So all of these vehicles would be on a lease? Yes. Uh, we're, are we currently on a lease with the other companies or with the uh, we'll go? We'll buy them. No, we buy them. Okay. That's why I say we purchase, we usually purchase two cars a year, three cars every mm -hmm. other year. Mm -hmm. And two cars right now is costing us roughly $80,000 to purchase two cars. They, so is, there, is there any downsides in switching on how you acquire the vehicles? As far if, if Enterprise goes away, who are you going to turn to? Well, Enterprise, I don't see that being, if Enterprise goes under, I think we're in big trouble. Because they are, literally, they cars. are... Um, well, I don't see them going away anyway. But yeah, but, I mean, know. they are nationwide, and they're servicing millions of vehicles. That's well, always something we have to look at. Yeah, you know. and if, it, if they ever did happen, obviously, we'd have to go back to what we were doing, unless there was another company that was picking up and doing the same thing. Um, but more and more, you're really, you're really seeing this happen, because, I mean, that's what they have, um, a designated 
um, part of their business is for now is just for these with municipalities and fleet vehicles. And it's not just for um, police, it's for fire, for the township municipalities, for water department, DPW, everything from dump trucks to buses to you name it, they, they're doing it all. It and average is saving between ten and 15000 per vehicle. Yes. He came in and this, talked yeah. to us before yes. Oh, yes. at Enterprise, and, you know, when we were yeah. talking and, about and budget. We've been working on this since and getting this together, and uh, we, we finally got everything all finalized, ready to go, and that's where we're at right now. And mm -hmm. Isn't it easier to get them on lease versus purchasing them? Because if we purchase them, we're going to have to wait, too, and we can get them quicker with the lease? Well, it all I depends. Mean, um, in, in Right now, it's tough no matter what you do. Right. Um, so we're going to be able to get them. A lot of times, yes, because a lot of times they'll have some that are actually sitting within their lots, depending on how you order these vehicles. Right now, everybody's scooping them up, up as far as right. fast as you can find them. So. Okay. And that's kind of where we're sitting right now, where we've got some vehicles with some high mileage on it. What's nice, too, is they're going to take the current vehicles that we have right now. They are going to auction them for us. We get the proceeds from them as well. Um, so in, in what they're talking, I think we'll do pretty well as far as that goes, too. I think it, it'll at least cover the first year, maybe close to two years of lease payments for us by what we sell our vehicles for we have now. Great. So you're going to get the same type of vehicle, the same yes. standard, same specs? Mm -hmm. Yes. And you're going to do the retrofit? On yes, it? we do all the upfitting that on it, which I will be at the next board meeting to talk with you on that because obviously I'm going to have to have equipment come in and things like that. Um, the, uh, the Explorers themselves... They changed the body style on them in 2020, so anything before that, a lot of the things do not fit on them. Three of our vehicles right now are already outfitted with everything that's new. Three of them, we're going to have to replace some things like the cages and partitions, some of the push bars and things like that, bracketry and things like that. So, But everything, that, as far as that goes, we all do in-house. All the upfitting from top to bottom, we do so. And whether we were buying or leasing them, you'd still have to. We still, buy them. still have to do that. Right, we'd still be doing them. Yeah, we save we, we save a a lot of money by doing them ourselves. Mm -hmm. So, thank you for doing that. Yep, sounds like a win win. Good Can you refresh my memory? Isn't this a low level of commitment for your department? Yes. Like, can't you opt out of this? Yes. Just about whenever you want. Right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Say if we, uh, we were into this for two years and we said, you know, we want to be done with this, buy the lease out, we're done, vehicles are ours. Yeah. Yes. 30 days. There's, there's no commitment. Yeah. Yeah, there's no long-term commitment with it. That's what I remembered here, and I just need yeah. to hear it again. It's, it's, you know, like I say, everything that I've looked into with it is, is shown to be a very good program. Talking to um, other chiefs, other supervisors in different uh, municipalities and that, and they, they've had nothing but good to say about it. I know John has done the, the looking into it as well, right alongside, same with George. And uh, we haven't found anything bad. It it's kind of scares me a little bit. I know. Are we, how many times are we, where, 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 where are we not seeing? Where's right. the catch? And that's why I say, and this is something like I say, I've been working on for at least eight months now. Um, and I bet you I, I work on this at least two, three days a week. So. Great. Okay, I'll entertain a motion. Does anyone have any? Well, we'll make, do the motion. Board, I'll make a motion to approve Chief Coach's request for the Enterprise Police Vehicle Lease. Support. Okay, we have motion to support. Any more questions for Chief? No. Or discussion? We, we've talked to several, several people. I know Johnny has, what, Harrison Township and Chesterfield? Five years. Yes. So. Matter of fact, they're the ones that just sold the 2015s and made more money on them five years later than what they purchased them for. Yeah. We're actually Pretty good. making money. And, and Do I expect that to always be that way? No. No. <laughs> but I know we'll do better than what we do right now driving the wheels off them. For sure. So. All right. Uh, hearing mo no more discussion, roll call vote, please. Christy Hilton? Yes. Chris O'Regan? Yes. Cindy Valentine? Yes. Mark Bouchard? Yes. Maureen Borey? Yes. Joanne Shirky? Yes. Artie Bryson? Yes. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank next you. Next thing we have the really the same question is for our uh, our township vehicle, our, for the administration. We got the enterprise lease contract. Uh, 
annual 9282. They, <clears throat> talking to these guys, they, they basically said, you know, we'll probably want to swap your vehicle out once a year because we'll probably get you more money than what you pay for it. So we'll be making money and getting a new car every year, I guess. Right. But hey. There's not probably as many miles put on it as the police right, cars. Right. So, yeah. So. Well, I'll make a motion to approve the admin uh, enterprise lease contract for an annual cost of $9,282.12. Support. We have su support. Any more discussion? Roll call, please. Chris Oregon. Yes. Cindy Valentine, yes. Mark Bouchard? Yes. Maureen Borey? Yes. Joanne Shirky? Yes. Artie Bryson? Yes. Christy Hiltman? Yes. Okay, motion passes. Okay, next we have uh, Andy. Are you sleeping on us yet? Okay, we have the question of the Elgnac water plant uh, to purchase filter membrane replacement. And uh, we have the superintendent of the water plant here with us um, and jump in or correct me if I'm wrong on anything we um, we have these micro filters and uh, the life expectancy of them is five six years when you deal with colder water we get less a shorter life which we deal with a lot of cold water and ours are seven years old and um, we only really have one uh, Supplier, is that right, Andy? Yes. Yeah, can you come up here? Sure. Okay. And if everybody doesn't know, this is um, Andy Messina. Andy Messina from the he's the superintendent of the, our water plant. So, um, the co total cost is is four hundred and forty five thousand seven hundred sixty dollars. Um, reason we want to do it now as opposed to January because there's a 10% price increase, so basically we're saving 45 grand by doing it now. And I'm, is the blocks new blocks included yeah. on this? Yes, we uh, knew we were going to have to replace the membranes. We know there's a lifespan on those. This is the first time we're replacing the blocks throughout the whole unit. I, I gave them pictures of that okay. in my last. Board Some of those blocks, or I would have to, I would say that all the blocks in the first three units are cracked. They have a small crack on the bottom. Uh, some of them have large cracks towards the top, and that's causing us to fail our PDT test or pressure decay test. The state won't allow us to uh, let it go over 2.0. Uh, on our pressure decay because that's an indication that water is bypassing getting through the crack uh, The membranes have a very small hole in the element only you allow water to pass through uh, Viruses are too big to pass through uh, so we can Make a physical barrier between the dirt and the water in in the drinking water But if those cracks continue to grow those uh, those barriers won't be there in place anymore. The water get through. We've known for I, I, I've, I've been there for five years, and I've known the day I walked in, they talked about the crack blocks and the problems they gave us, and they're compounding as time goes on, and especially during the winter when the cold water hits, water uh, the viscosity increases. It gets it harder to push through the membranes. The pressure increases, and then forces the water through those cracks so if if we want to do the membrane replacement we have to do the Same membrane time. replacement because uh we're of loss of our uh the trans <laughs> lots of numbers or letters here transmembrane pressures the for the water to go through uh and you cannot do the repair on these machines and set those membranes aside they have to stay wet if they dry out, they're no longer any good because once they're dry, water won't pass through them again. So if we do it why we get the new membranes, they come packaged, uh, sealed, so we can do our repairs, put the new membranes in, and not have to worry about, the old, uh, about them drying out on us. And we've never done a, a block replacement ourselves, so there's also... A price in here for there to have a guy on sh on, on duty with us, their their people, uh, because there's a lot of tricks to making this happen, making these go back in for the installation. Correct. 
So I'll, I'll help. ask you a uh, chicken and egg question. Okay. Does the water come first before it hits the block or, or suck it or after the membrane? Uh, it, it's a, a pressure system, so the water comes in through the outer shell mm -hmm. and then gets pushed through the membrane. And then when the water goes through the membrane, the uh, uh, water is collected on the inside and then goes out to the ground yeah, storage the tank. Are. The blocks are the two capped ends of the membranes. The membranes are a, a okay. cylinder, and the blocks are the two capped ends, yeah. and uh, that's where the water could come in contact with raw water. Do the caps uh, have a uh, play on the uh, uh, purity of the water going through the membranes or not? I'm sorry, what was this? Is the water, do the caps affect the, the water quality? Well, it's if the water gets through the crack, uh, the caps, it will. Right now, it's going through the membranes and it's being protected. Uh, we may be exceeding our pressure decay test, mm -hmm. but the turbidity, which is the measurement of the dirt in the water, the suspended solids, those we're not exceeding. We're not exceeding those, those numbers. Uh, so we're still, <laughs> we're still, uh, that that number is the manufacturer's recommendation number. The state actually questioned it, uh, did their own math on the calculations and said that we actually have a higher number than what the, the manufacturer, but that manufacturer number is there to start us to uh, take the initiative to do the repairs. We can't wait until after we have a problem. We, you know, in, in the water industry, it's always, you gotta act first. I think this was discussed once before. You going to replace with the same type of material cap or something different? Uh, the design is going to be exactly the same, but uh, I can see that we have three units that were uh, purchased in 2000, then one unit that was purchased in 2002. And you can see that th those first three units all have cracks in it. The, the next one, two years later, didn't. I'm really sure that the manufacturer realized there was a problem with the type of uh, plastic that they used and used a different formula and that's why the other one it doesn't show any cracks where the other ones show cracks in them all but wasn't there a, a question if we're going to go fine thread or coarse the, thread the, or? that's the only change uh, yeah. the first three are fine, fine threads thread. uh, the last one was a coarse thread in the, causing the cracks uh, the, think. the manufacturer yeah. made that choice to change the, the kind of threads themselves and like I say, there's there's a reason for that. They don't do it just because they want to. They, there there was a practical reason for those fine, those coarse threads, and that's what we're going through with the new ones. They're going to be all coarse from now on, no more fine. Those are actually obsolete, so there's no sense in us buying something that's obsolete and hoping it's going to uh, be still in service 20 years from now. So, I have two questions. This is, we've got room for this in our budget, right? Yep. It's been budgeted. And then my second question is, don't we share with the Algonac? Are they paying oh, yes. part of it? Yes. So we, what's our portion and what's their portion? It's what, 64% now? We're, we're at 64. So, so we'd be responsible of 64% of this. All right, 64. So it's not going to be 445,000. No. It's going to be 64% 64 of that. OK. Just want to make sure they're going to pay their part. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Mr. Messiah, thanks for coming in today and helping Thank explaining you. this. Thank you. Appreciate that. Water's Can you tell important. me, will there be any interruption to our water service or any boil water alerts that will come in with this uh, maintenance the, program? We, sh we shouldn't have any. Uh, the, we'll, we'll time it. We'll uh, make sure that we can, uh, like I said, we're replacing three out of the four uh, blocks. Mm -hmm. The fourth one is just membranes. As soon as we change those membranes, we're going to get a, a, a good working unit right off the bat. Then we're going to go and do it one at a time, go down the line, so that because we couldn't take them all offline. Take one train. The, the trains. We yeah, call them. we got four trains. Take one. Do train one off. at a time. One at a time. Yeah. Okay. And given the lead time of. The product, if, if we go now, this is something that you oh, expect to do next summer? Correct, correct. Four yeah, to six this, months, and uh, this may the not way I see this things current slow down. budget year, because uh, it's going to be on a slow road from Australia. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. where they make it. That's where they're from. Well, we want to avoid that increase. Yes, it's going to be on uh, Algonac's agenda on the 17th, so okay. once it goes through there, then we can place the order. 
So because you're here today, can I press you on the issue? Do you see any other major maintenance type needs that that water treatment plant will, will have to, to have? Uh, yes, in... this plant is 20 plus years old. Uh -huh. Anything that has anything to do with computers and programming, which is a lot of the, what this machine, you know, these units are, are like, mm -hmm. they're all 20 years old. Uh, we do have to do a major uh, upgrades. You can't have a computer system that's 20 years old and expect it to keep on going for you. So are they currently scheduled? We have we have scheduled SCADA. replacements. We have been doing it. We uh, replaced our computer system, the SCADA system that oversees the whole yeah. system. We've sure. already done that. We also have one another one online uh, that's uh, been bid out and accepted. Uh, that's going to do the individual filter units will be replaced because the equipment that they used 20 years ago, they don't make, they don't support any of that anymore. That all has to be changed over. Uh, we've had a couple of incidences where we turn the power off to a unit, do a, re do a, a, a repair, turn it back on, something else doesn't want to work because it's been online for 20 years. You kill power to it, you just don't know what you're going to get when you turn it back on. So we, we have to do a major investment to bring that plant up to today's uh, standard or today's equipment because all that equipment every time we call about a piece of equipment well we haven't made that in 10 years you know that that type of thing gotcha yeah so we can expect to see something from your office I'm sorry <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, yes. I mean, it is what it is right but it is it is be proactive rather than right we've done you can't afford not to you right. can't afford not we've to we've done you. a lot of upgrades in that plan we we did we did the um the um the pumps, the v a VFE, the VFD drive for yeah, high service VFD pump drives. And when that, that new SCADA system gets in, we're going to install that to yep. run uh, it'll run the uh, the the pumps more efficiently. They won't run at 100% uh, on off. It'll be a ramped up, ramped down. So that that, saves. Uh, 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 my understanding is there's going to be a lot of grants coming down for water plants and we can infrastructure, only hope. and so we can only hope. You know, we'll just have to keep an eye out for that because it would definitely right. be a benefit. Yeah. Oh. Watch for that yep. for sure. Great, thanks. Any more uh, questions for Andy? Mm -hmm. oh, thank okay. you, Andy. Thank I'll you. I'll enter, thanks for coming in. I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the Algonac water plant filter membrane replacement at 64% uh, of the $445,760. Support. Yeah, motion and support. Any more discussion? So, hearing none, roll call. Cindy Valentine, yes. Mark Bouchard? Yes. Maureen Borey? Yes. Joanne Shirky? Yes. Artie Bryson? Yes. Christy Hilton? Yes. Chris O'Regan? Yes. Okay, motion passed. <clears throat> All right, next we uh, invited uh, County Commissioner uh, Dave Vandenbosch uh, to give us an update in the county and can talk about uh, um, emergency sirens and upgrading our, our system and expanding our system. Well, hello, everybody. Um, as we all know, we've got the ARPA money and stuff like that came into the county. And uh, Chairman of the Board, uh, Bohm, actually wanted to give each one of the commissioners about 500000 to spread out through his district. And... There's different ways of spending it, and uh, com some commissioners are doing paving projects, gravel, culvert projects. I lean more toward public safety. That is my, that's more of my, what I'm used to, what I'm comfortable. And uh, I've talked to Chief Rose for the last few years about some of the issues we've been having with sirens, and we've gotten the county finally, all of them fixed. There's 54 in the county including clays would make it 57 and today they actually worked flawlessly for the first time well they've been working about the last about year but we've finally got everything working well but, for, for the record clays always did it work. did, Yay. It did. <laughs> for the record it did. but we had a lot of maintenance issues with the sirens and they weren't getting done so finally the counties have we put one contractor in charge of the whole county that way it's all, and actually they put in uh, recording systems that actually let us know when they don't work too. We didn't even know some of them didn't work. 
Wow. Some of them weren't even on the paper that they were there. We didn't even know they were there. So, but with that, we actually started noticing huge gaps in the uh, in the net, as we call it, the coverage area for the sirens, especially down this way. And one of them, one of the biggest places, is Harsons Island. And uh, there's not, and it's the area in the county that's been hit most by tornadoes. It's been hit three times in its history so far. There's not a siren on it. And also with the island, you have all the bays. And a lot of the people, as everybody knows down here, you don't have cell service sometimes when you're out in the bay. So you don't know you're getting an alert, a weather alert. So the only thing you have is the siren. So um, we, talk, we met today with West Shore, who is the contractor for the county, who's actually servicing mall. And uh, we talked about having actually installing 15 new sirens in the in the Casco, Clay Township, Cotterville, and China Township uh, areas. Casco's not my area, but it makes sense to create a, a, a good coverage. And that's why I invited them to come join with us so we can cover everything from 32 Mile Road south all the way to the end of the islands. So, and that will, right, right now we only have 13 sirens in that area. And we're looking to add 15 more. Uh -huh. And that will cover the area. It's not going to be perfect. If you're in your basement, it's not, you're not going to hear it. But if you're out in your parks or out on the waterways without your engine roaring, if you're enjoying the outside, you'll hear it. And that's when you need to take cover. So mm -hmm. um, Clay Township proposed six sirens in Clay Township. China's looking at five. And they're actually covering some of the other areas by taking five themselves and putting them on their borders. And Cotterville's done the same thing by putting one in there uh, along the water in M29 to cover the Algonac State Park. So we have a siren very close to all those campers because we did lose some people during a weather event in Fort Trod, and that's probably about eight years ago. So we really want to get those campers notified of any severe weather. And then we're also looking at two in Cotterville, two in Casco, so a total of 15. Um, right now, each siren costs roughly $25,000, plus or minus a few, depending on uh, hookups. But we're looking at about $375,000 for the whole project. The county will pick up $250,000 of that. And then the local match would then be about $125,000. And I know. Chief Rose has already budgeted and his thing, but this is just another way to help them, and then they can reinvest that money back into the township, into this department. So um, I just want to impact the most amount of people. Gravel and road projects are great, and we do need to do them, but I wanted to help as many people as I could. If we can save one or two lives just by getting these installed, they're, it's worth every penny. And uh, I just wanted to bring that to you. We had a great meeting with... Uh, Artie Bryson and all the players today, and uh, it was a great meeting. Everything went really well. And Artie actually, I had no idea how to put this together because they gave me no information. Here, here's a lump sum of money, and we've never had that in years to do that with. So, and Artie came up with a great one third, two thirds program, and I think that's going to work out great for all the players involved. So, and I think it, it's going to work out well. So, we're going from three to nine sirens then? Mm -hmm. And how many would be on the island? Uh, was it two or three? No, I think it's uh, three or four. Three or four. We, George has been working on this for two years now, our fire chief. Yeah, I remember sirens. And I put it in this year's budget, right. uh, $150,000 for uh, six sirens. And um, we've been working with the supplier as far as placement with it. But now we're tweaking it because, like Cotterville, they're willing to put one just on the other side of the state park, which would cover the north part of Clay Township to Elginac. So we wouldn't need one there. And we're looking at, well, we're gonna put one at the north part, on the west side of our township up north, so that will cover some of Cotterville for that. We're, we're, okay. we're, we're working together. Yeah, working together. Um, there, there's uh, probably, uh, we're looking at optimal places to place these uh, on the island and the mainland. We like to have them on uh, 
property that either we control or it's it's, on, it's a little more complicated if it's on the road easement as far as placement, but it's not unheard of. Mm -hmm. But we, we have spots like uh, the DNR property, the San Susi, the fire hall. We own some, some properties at other places on the island and on the mainland, but where our pump stations are for our lift stations and stuff. And we also have to have a ability to run electricity to them. And I will tell the board that, you know, once, once uh, these will be owned by the, each municipality, and we talked about the meeting, there's maintenance involved on these, and we can be on a maintenance plan, and they are about uh, $450 per tower per year. And I, I also remind the others, too, that uh, we also have to pay for electricity, so there's a electric, you know. So it, roughly it's going to cost $600 a year per tower um, for, for the maintenance, but... If something goes wrong with it, uh, it needs a new transmitter or or, uh, or or something along those lines. Or the battery backups. The battery go bad. backups go it's bad. All covered. Things like that. It, it would be the township's responsibility. Are you telling me I'm getting six more electric bills? I know. I thought that. <laughs> They're like bunnies. Yeah. Do we have to replace the three that we have now, or no. is it just six? No. no. Okay. They, and they work flawlessly so yeah and they actually were tested today at one o'clock and worked yeah. great oh that's so, great um, so they'll last a long time the new oh, yeah. but with the maintenance program that actually covers your replacement parts too for some of the yeah a lot of the parts so it's uh it's First a good program and like i said we've gotten the county back online but we noticed some areas that need coverage and that's why I'm, i was kind of hoping this works out um, we're still waiting and we'll be getting more information to you in the next couple weeks, but I just wanted to bring that to you. And, and we'll probably be getting a resolution similar like we get with uh, uh, road match funding where, yeah. you know, and I, I kind of threw it out there to Dave today. Well, why don't you, why don't we do a one third match? So mm -hmm. the county's going to pay for two thirds and we'll, we'll pay one third. So essentially, you know, we had 150 grand budgeted for this year for these sirens. So, so it'll, it'll, end, it'll, it'll end up costing us 50,000. Mm -hmm. So we'll be able to, uh, you know, use that 100, you know, we'll have $100,000 to save or put other places that we, we need fit. So in some of the other communities that already ha in my district already have sirens like Algonac and Marine City, we're looking at uh, some emergency generators to do the fact they already have sirens, so they don't need them, but they have no backup generators for their warming centers or the Algonac DPW needs a more portable generator for uh, to do their lift stations. So yeah. I mean, it's so I'd like to try and focus this 500,000 on that and Art, you did a good job spending a big chunk of it. So you said it's three hundred seventy-five thousand for the six of them. For the no, no. that's for the fifteen of them. 15. Oh, okay. All right. And by buying in economies to scale and by uh, leveraging the county, we you know we could beat them up a little bit on the price and hold the price down because they're talking about eight nine hundred dollar increases in the next year. So we're going well. We get to keep your quoted price already, right? Yeah. So great. And then. Um, I also wanted to touch base on that fire. Um, I was actually sitting status in Marine City because I am their assistant fire chief, and I sent our chief down here to help out. And uh, what the community's done has been amazing. I I came down to uh, Elginac Lions the day after, and they were uh, sorting clothes. And the Marine City Lions, we put an event together up there for them, and we collected six cars worth of things. And dropped off and what the lions have done down there was just amazing i mean i was on the phone thursday wednesday or thursday with some of the staff from the county about the section eight to help the people get their housing and then i heard that the lions were picking up their rent just so that they had places to live and uh it was amazing um emergency management came down right away and worked right at the Lions Club and got them some temporary shelter through uh, some of the apartment or some of the motels. And it's not a great time of year to be staying in a motel, but 
beats being out on the street. And I, Joe Doan, I can't say enough how he organized that fire. It was, and with the help of Chief Slankster and Chief Ropes, I mean, they, they handled it. It was a big, big fire. Hopefully we don't see the likes of that fire for a long time. And then the police department did a phenomenal job breaking. I mean, they broke every door wall, made sure every unit was clear. The fire department did a search, but they already had a, a preliminary search done for us. And that's one less thing we had to do, and it was a, probably a fire at the least amount of manpower. I mean, especially in our paid on call areas. George was lucky enough he had a full staff, so he, he was a huge help. So if we didn't, if it happened at, in the middle of the night, it would have been ter ter oh. ter terrible. Just, um, mm -hmm. I, I don't know what it would have been like. But to have 24 residents displaced and have them housing and get them out and everybody safe and no one seriously injured in the fire was just wonderful. wonderful. So thank you for all the, guys, all the things you guys do with our community. So Thank you, Dave. Anything else about the oh. county? Yeah. You got anything else? I know you got a lot going on all the time. It's a little busy, but oh. it's all right. That's what they put me here for. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's what you guys put me here for. So. That's right. So let's just hope we can get this all put together because the time frame is we want to get these sirens up before next year's storm season. Yep. That, so that was our goal, and that was one of the biggest points we made with the, the contractor today. If we get this done by the end of the year, paperwork-wise, we're going to have these before spring storms. So are yeah, you going to work on the resolutions for us to? Yes. Okay. I will get with uh, Carrie Hefting Carrie. in her office and get it to you. If you need any help with that, let me know. Okay. You could probably use what the County Road Commission kind of. It is what, no, re, no use reinventing exactly. the wheel. So, exactly. But anybody have any questions on it, I'd be, you know, give me a call or so. Yep. All right. All right. Good work Thank from you. you, Dave. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. All right, next uh, we have on our agenda um, the support letter really for um, uh, the um, regional, uh, the St. Clair County Regional Trail Board. Uh, bridge to Bay? Yep, the, for the Bridge to Bay. We're looking at um, a couple key, or, or some kiosks. Uh, for bikers, making it more bright bike friendly uh, throughout the township, and uh, uh, they want me to sign this uh, support letter. Um, and and the uh, the grant, uh, you know, we will have to. We'll probably be responsible for about eighteen thousand dollars. These are kind of estimates. It includes a kiosk at the state park, a full kiosk at the state park. They have full kiosks with signage and secondary. And they're looking at a full kiosk at the state park, one here next door, one on Harsons Island, and uh, it'll probably go at Brownsfield, and then it, we may move it once we get our nature um, park installed, but I'd probably, I'd, Probably be asking uh, permission at Browns Field of putting it there for now, uh, and one at um, the Pearl Beach Pier fishing pier, and a full kiosk at the proposed county beach park. So that's what we're looking at in the plan, and that's the plan they suggested. I I was in favor of it, so I'm asking the board's permission for me to. To sign this uh, letter of support, like a pretty good price for eighteen thousand for all that. Oh yeah, yeah. It's a uh, it's a grant through the um, Charles Wilson mm -hmm. Foundation Legacy Funds, and um, it's uh, it's going to be about one hundred ten thousand dollars worth of uh, stuff for us. And uh, like I say, uh, our cost will, will our match will be about eighteen thousand. Have you seen any examples? Yeah, I have. Um, are they, are I they like electronic touch screen. No, no, they, 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 they're individual signage. They're covered. Um, okay. 
and they have uh, different things for uh, to help bikers out and stuff. Uh, some Showing them, trails or something? Trails. They, some of them have a little air pump if they need uh, power, and a little thing to fix tire a flat tire and, 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 and tools and stuff. They, they're, they're pretty slick. Well, I'll make a motion to approve the St. Clair County Regional Trail Support Letter of Support for you to sign, Ernie. I have a second. Support. Okay. So are there any uh, emergency uh, call buttons on that? Uh, no. That'd be something to look at. <laughs> really? Yeah. You need uh, maybe, some Maybe kind not of, on all of them, but maybe the remote ones. Right. You need some kind of a cell or, or electronic yeah, connection, but... We're talking up to a siren. How's that? <laughs> right. Okay. Pointing straight yeah, down. It's going to make it yeah. cost a lot more. So, all right. Uh, oh, we better do roll call. It is a well. Yeah, we better do roll call on it. Is there any more discussion? I'm good. Oh, okay. Roll call, please. Mark Bouchard. Yes. Maureen Bory. Yes. Joanne Shirky. Yes. Artie Bryson. Yes. Christy Hilton. Yes. Chris O'Regan. Yeah. Cindy Valentine, yes. Okay, motion passes. And next we have board member comments. Cindy. Well, it was nice to see a full boardroom tonight, yeah. for sure. Um, I just want to say thank you to St. John's Dental um, for their supporting our fire department. Thank you, Andy, for coming from the water department and or the, the well, the water station, I guess, in Algonac. Um, we appreciate the feedback and the, the information tonight. and. It's nice to actually talk to somebody That's when we're approving something to that large amount of money. Um, and thank you, Commissioner Vandenbosch, for taking the time to come down and see us. And I really appreciate you looking out for public safety out here. That's all I got. Okay, Chris. Yeah, it, this may be a broken record, but I can't go without acknowledging and thanking the first responders in our community and mutual aid communities uh, for that rolling brook fire. Um, I'm in the fire restoration business and I, I had to walk that project last week and I can tell you without fail it is a 100 percent total loss on that complete building. It is gone. There's no roof left. The walls are opened up. The doors are broken in. It's a hundred percent total loss. And to think of a building of that magnitude, almost 20,000 square feet, and it's black with smoke from one end to the other, and we have brave men and women going into that environment and pulling all 24 residents out, it's, it, it's, it's a Christmas miracle. It really is. I mean, we had no loss of life on that. The structure's insured. It'll be repaired. It'll be replaced. But human life is far more precious, and I'm just so grateful for Chief Rose, Chief Coach, the firefighting departments, the mutual aid, it just, it all worked. It worked like our leaders have it set up to work. So it was awesome, and it can't be underestimated how grateful I am that, that we have no loss of life there. That's all I have. Thank you. Chrissy? Um, I just want to report that winter tax collection is underway. Um, <laughs> and also, we are also collecting for the Goodfellows. So toys, um, actually the care bag, care bag movement, right? Mm -hmm. Brought in a box today and they are collecting gift cards that we have um, behind the counter for foster children that are in the MDHHS system. Um, so we're doing that and we have the hats and coats and not coats, hats, gloves, scarves, a toy box, and then monetary donations if anyone wants to do that. Thank you. Mark? Yeah, I'll be looking forward to the uh, next planning commission meeting. Uh, we don't have one uh, until next January, I believe, so uh, if this is going to take place, we need to I get think a... they uh, canceled. Yeah, right. Uh, mm -hmm. December, well, November and December were canceled, so we got to have one in, in January, and we need to put out a five-day, or a, yeah, at least a five-day notice for a public hearing on uh, this issue. We also need to discuss the fencing issue, the uh, accessory building issue, and those ordinances that need to be straightened out a little bit. Why were those uh, commission, uh, those meetings canceled? I, I don't know. Nobody informs me. I just get an okay. email from 
Cindy. I was yeah. wondering why they were canceled too. Canceled. Yeah, so. Mm -hmm. I don't know, a uh, little chair communication issue, but anyways, uh, also like to thank uh, their first responders for the uh, event that uh, took place, as Chris was mentioning. Uh, I am a member of the Lions Club, and I was at the Lions Club for, as well as all some of the other members, most of the other members there for 24 hours, uh, bringing in the uh, re uh, recipients and getting them comfortable and getting transportation for them. And we did find uh, some temporary shelter uh, for all of those uh, displaced people. Uh, so again, uh, thank you very much for a job well done. Thank you. Mm -hmm. okay. Oh, ditto on all of that. And uh, wanted to say congratulations to to you, John, for being starting to retire pretty soon. <laughs> I don't know nobody mentioned that, but uh, we're going to miss well, you. Well, he didn't submit it yet. Yeah. No? <laughs> but he's thinking no. about it, so. He's, he's still got another meeting. Okay, good. Um, and I just had a little challenge I wanted to talk to the board about tonight because we got this letter today, and I don't. I think it's maybe because the public didn't hear about it till Thursday. Is the, and, and I was scrambling trying to figure it all out because, you know, as you know, I'm new. I'm trying to make my way. But... Is there any way we could maybe talk about getting the agenda out of maybe Wednesday night so no. that, because we're closed on Friday or maybe open on Friday, if that's something we can put on the agenda for next meeting? Agenda can't go out other than on Thursday. We run checks on Thursday. Mm. Things are still coming in throughout the week as it is. We only have four days in a week. so Because it just in. doesn't give the public any chance to call because nobody's there on Friday. And then Monday's right. the meeting. And that's why we didn't take any action on that. Yeah. And I mean, all we wanted to do is direct it for a public hearing. All right. Well, was, I was just simple. hoping we could move it up. I didn't understand the I, people. Okay. Kind of overreact. I just, right. Okay. So, okay. Joanne? I'm glad to see that we're going to have a public hearing with the Planning Commission. I think that'll be a good thing for us. Uh, but when, it, when it's going to be, we don't know exactly. Nope. So, uh, and I, I want to say, I do agree with everything that uh, Chris said, and uh, we've got lots going on in this community, and we're trying to get a lot done before the beginning of the next year. So, and have uh, a Merry Christmas, everybody. Okay. <laughs> All right, thank you. Andy, thanks for coming. Dave, thanks for coming. Good working with you. Um, yeah, these sirens are, are going to be a great thing. It's, uh, I know, uh, George, we've been, we, we've been looking at it and, and uh, working on it for a couple of years now. So uh, thanks for stepping up to the plate with the county and helping us out on that. Um, the good fellows, everybody knows what they do, No Kid Without Christmas. And another thing we do at the township, if anyone wants to round up when they pay a bill round up we, we give the difference to the good fellows on any bill or if they want to say five, give them five ten bucks more whatever we do that all the time and and uh it goes to the good fellows how, how many how, do you know how much we've I don't. oh you'd have to look how much we collected for them of people rounding up their bills or or kicking a few more bucks on their water bill or whatever they pay so that's a good thing. They do a great job. And, yeah, with the, the fire at Rolling Brook, it, it was amazing. We're going to be uh, um, singling out a few heroes that were at that. We, we had uh, a couple, three police officers that were literally carrying people out to safety. And uh, also a couple of firemen that were breaking down doors and carrying people out to safety. While that was going on, wow. and it was uh, pretty hectic. I mean, you're, you're talking with people that are in wheelchairs or walkers. Um, it, uh, it it worked out. It couldn't have gone any better. Uh, proud of the the guys that reacted, and it was funny. Late, later in the uh, day, I was at the Lions Hall trying to help the residents out that were there. I see the. Uh, the state emergency manager walks in, and he's out by the door. And, hey, Artie, how's everything going? Okay, well, do you need this? Uh, no, we got that already. 
Well, what about medicine? You know, Red Cross isn't here yet, but no, we got that handled. Uh, I mean, he, he said like four or five things. Do you need help with? No, it's already handled. And he, he was amazed himself that, uh, and this is like an hour and a half after it happened, uh, how, how the community came together and, and uh, helped with the, the needs of these uh, people. It was very traumatic for them. And uh, we had two pastors there and a social worker there talking to them, consoling them. Um, you know, and a lot of these people had pets. We had the, the pet store come and bring us dog food and cat food and litter and, and a couple dog beds and stuff. I mean, it, it, it just came. It, it was amazing how this community um, came together, and I'm proud to be part of this community. So thank you. One more uh, motion. Motion to adjourn. Yep. Support. All in favor, aye. 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 Thanks for coming, everybody.